Hello, She Lovelies. Um, I'm Shaylee Hugendorn, and um, I post here on She Loves Magazine. And I'm starting a series here um, talking to my other sisters with mental illness. Um, this is such an important topic, and I know so many deal with it. We know there's one in four women right now struggling, and so we just wanted to bring light to um, different topics around mental illness, and I just wanted to talk to other women that have mental health issues. Today, I have the most amazing she lovely, Abby Norman, from now on known as the pastor on Prozac, here to, um, we're going to talk about how people always say, you look fine, or you seem fine, and um, we're going to tackle that. So Abby, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Hi, my name is Abby Norman. I am in the ordination process as a Methodist minister, I'm in seminary, I have one more year. Oh my gosh, I can't wait. And um, I'm currently serving as a licensed local pastor, relaunching a church on the southeast side of Atlanta called New Hope, which I'm so excited about. And all of that has happened really quickly and in a way that's like, oh, okay, so God has this thing for me. <laughs> but right before that, um, I realized that I was not fine um, about six months before all that happened. I realized, oh, oh, mentally, I am not fine. And so I am totally sure that I could not be doing all these exciting things if I wasn't on Prozac. And so this like new exciting part of my life definitely has to do with me coming to terms with my depression and anxiety. So what were the events that led up to, how did you know that it was time to get help that you were not fine? So, um, man, I started choosing a word for the year in 2011, and I know I'm not the only one. I realized I was going to be a pastor or that I might be called to preach in 2013 when my, year, when my word was unashamed. But for the year of 2017, my word was whole. I was in seminary and it was my first year of seminary and I wasn't teaching anymore. And I just felt very um, disjointed. I didn't feel like my life was coming together. And so my word for the year was whole. And then during Lent, I tried to give up negative self-talk. Mm. And I literally could not do it. And I knew that I had suffered from, I knew I was having some anxiety. I knew I was having some depression. I had been on like herbs and supplements. I was on an antidepressant in high school. I went off of it. I knew that this was a thing that I sort of struggled with or, or I would have said I was managing uh, and that some days were better than other days. But I, I thought like, oh, I've got, I've, I'm handling it, like, I'm managing it, like, everybody has anxiety, everybody has depression, but I could not turn off the voice in my head that was like, this is bad, you are bad, you're going to be bad, and I know for other women, it, it's like, they have anxiety, and it leads to depression, for me, I have depression, and if I don't manage my depression, then I get anxiety. And I, I couldn't turn it off. I mean, I, I could not do it. And so I was like, okay, okay. So you need to find a way to, to be able to change those voices. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I am very familiar with these, with this. Um, I remember going to a psychiatrist. I don't know about you, but um, mine, I can remember since, since high school, was this a new thing for you or? It was like, it, no. no, and it would be better and it would be worse. Mm -hmm. um, I, looking back at my life, I should have been on depression medication mm -hmm. since my first child was born in 2011. Yeah. I absolutely should have. Um, but I knew how to manage it. Like I, I knew how to, I was teaching at the time and I knew how to like, not do anything one day or just do the minimum amount and then do more when I felt better and 
all of those things. But as my life transitioned into being a full-time seminarian, all of a sudden I couldn't manage it the way that I had before. So for me, it was like a major life change really showed me that I was not as fine as I was pretending to be. Wow. Wow. You talked about, um, about how when you're not managing your depression, you get anxious. Um, I can relate to that because I'm one or the other. I'm either totally like numb or sad for no reason and, um, you know, negative self-talk, that kind of thing. But just, yeah, I just feel numb. I remember, um, you know, driving in our car and I'd be sitting in the passenger seat. And I remember just trying to like peeking in windows and thinking, man, like how do people just feel regular? I wonder what a regular winter feels like. Like I wonder what it would feel like to be okay in the winter time, mm-hmm. right? And I just, I knew, and with me, I had been asking for help all along. So I had been on depression meds and such, but see, I only went to the doctor when I was depressed because I thought that was the thing. And mm-hmm. I thought that the, the, you know, the high me, the big me um, was, you know, that was me. And then I got depressed, but what I guess I didn't realize that, um, you know, with hypomania, because I'm bipolar too, before two, yeah, where you only get hypomania, you don't get the full blown mania. So mm-hmm. to me, it just seemed like because I am a highly excitable person, anyways, and I do have a big personality. I thought that was just me, but I didn't realize that um, I was actually anxious. So I didn't. I'd have like positive self talk, like you have awesome ideas, let's do this, and then I do them and jump in. But then afterwards, I'm like, oh, I don't know if that was a good idea. Maybe I'm mm-hmm. stuck. And I think. Um, I think what I didn't realize is that nobody really talks about um, anger and my anxiety manifests in anger. So I'm I'm angry. I'm angry at injustice. I'm angry at the little things like things make me so angry. And I spend so much time trying to cover that up because it's not really a, you know, great. Right. Women, womanly quality. um, Or so they say. Um, so then that's why when, when my anger and my not sleeping got really, really bad, it's the first time I went in when I was hypomanic and that's when, when they were able to, to diagnose me because the medicine that you probably take for depression actually makes me rapid cycle. So I was always on these medicines and they would up, 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 (laughs) and then I would start rapid cycling back and forth and back and forth. Yeah. Yeah. When I, when I knew, when I realized like, I, I'm not actually this angry, but my whole body felt furious. So mm-hmm. then when we thought about it, I'm like, I'm not actually angry. Yeah. And that happens to me with anxiety mm. where I'll start like sweating mm. and I'll like, my heart will be beating and I'll think like crazy things. Like I remember I was writing this paper for a seminary and I was an English teacher before. I've never gotten less than a B. I didn't have to worry about it. And I was like, this is paper. It's going to be so bad. They're going to kick me out. So like, that's not how that works. Like that is none of that is like, that's that they, they're not going to do that. And this was like, not a big deal paper and like not a very hard graders class. Like the whole thing didn't make any sense. And I was like sitting there thinking they're going to kick me out. They're going to kick me out of seminary. That's it. This paper. And then they're going to kick me out. Wow. It's interesting how anxiety makes you go from here to like, there's no in between. Right. Like I remember uh, I talked about it before about the big one where I literally went from, should I buy, you know, this toothpaste or the no name one or the one that's on for two for one. And I jumped from there to literally, if I don't start buying all no name stuff and pretty much putting us into debt, we might even, I was like at the point where I was going to lose my house over toothpaste. And yep. legit, and you know what, I don't know, do you find, what I find the worst part about being like somewhat high functioning is that I actually know the thoughts are wrong and I actually know they're crazy, but I can't stop them. That's so frustrating. Sometimes I think it's scary for me not to know and just be totally nutty and right. 
It's scary. Yeah, because I know, like I know in my head, like there's like this battle. Yeah, high functioning is like, I know that they are not going to fail me. I'm not going to get kicked out of seminary if I do this paper wrong. In my head, I know that. But it's like, I cannot stop the voices. And I think that that's the thing. If you feel like your thoughts are out of, out of control, mm-hmm. then you can't manage them. You maybe need to tell somebody that. Like, you are not fine. Yeah. Even if on the outside, it looks fine. Yeah. Like, that's enough. That should be it. That should be the yeah. you're not fine, call your doctor person. Beautiful. That, that is true because um, I don't know what it's like to not have a diagnosis, but I could imagine that you could talk yourself down from a thought because I know, you know, like you said, you know, we all deal with a bit of anxiety and mm-hmm. sadness and that kind of thing. But I think that's when we know we're not fine, when y- you can't talk yourself down. Right. You just can't. Wow. Oh, that is how you know. That's how you know. You're not fine. Well, we're going to do this video in kind of five to 10 minute increments, just in case you don't have the time to watch the whole thing. So that would be our first um, session. Our next um, video, if you want to click below, is um, we're going to talk about how we got help. So I hope you'll join us and click on the next one.